Okay, we're on full study, doing folly. We're at 216. And coming to the end, I don't know if we'll have finished today or one more time. But Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 17. And I gave my heart to know wisdom. And we have seen wisdom and fool, foolishness is quite opposite. And I've given my heart to know wisdom and to know madness and folly. So Solomon has drawn the book of Ecclesiastes a worldly view by a wise man of God. I mean, there are no heavenly doctrines in the book of Ecclesiastes eat, drink, and be merry. It's a man looking at the worldly perspective from a worldly eyes. And we see in this verse wisdom is not folly. And yet he has lumped madness and folly. And we have seen previously folly is sin. Deceiving, sexual, just going against God, nothing righteous. And here we have 216th madness. Why is the world mad today of craziness? Because of folly, because of sin. That's the only answer. And when you depart from God, you depart from light and turn to darkness. When you leave the realm of God, you are heading to the realm of Satan. And when you forsake the holiness of God, you are going amongst the, the sea of unholiness. I perceive that this, that this also is vexation of spirit. Solomon has learned that sin... And the Bible records disobeying the law for the Old Testament Jew. Solomon has learned that he has sinned. He's violated the law. He has learned about God and God spoke to him at least two occasions. He has had the realm of multiple wives. He has been the richest. And he has worshipped other gods. He has built the temple for God. He had a great and wise father that loved the Lord with his heart. And when it comes to no madness and folly, it's vexation of the spirit. There's no value. There's no warning. Ecclesiastes chapter 2 verse 30. Ecclesiastes 2 3. I sought in my heart to give myself unto wine, <laughs> get drunk, to drink, party, happy hour, alcohol. Let's do it. That's why some worldly ladies love the book of Ecclesiastes. Well, look, look what Solomon said. Again, we're looking at a worldly point of view. Yet, yeah. Acquaint my heart with wisdom. Now, uh, to know how to apply what you know. And to lay hold on folly. So Solomon is looking on a scale of one being foolish, vain, and just wickedness. And in a scale of ten, holiness, righteousness, and God. Solomon has been wavering at five. Pushing to one and pushing to ten. As he writes the book of Ecclesiastes. Solomon has written what. Oh, I want to venture out and see what sin is about. I want to see what the world's about. Then you study the book of Ecclesiastes. Without having to go out and do it yourself. 
And it's a plain, simple way to find out that the sewer system in your city streets stink without having to open up a manhole and jump in and go swimming. Till I might see what was that good, that good, for the sons of man, humans, which they should do unto the sun all the days of their life. Solomon saying, I attained the wisdom, I obtained the folly, that I might write to you about sin, I might write about to you about what is right, and what you should do without you going out and doing it. Anybody would think about multiple wives would look at the life of Solomon and see that his wives turned him away from God. Anybody would look at, oh, I want great wealth. I want all the wealth I can get and look at the life of Solomon and to see that he wasn't happy with the wealth he got. He sent navies out to get more wealth and still he wasn't happy more. Solomon built the temple for God. And then he built houses, he built palaces, he built the house out in the forest, he built the, the garrison over here. He built, that wasn't good enough for him. Folly of sin is not good enough for you. And you may start off with a little marijuana, just taking a tote with friends. And not realize years and years down the road you'll find yourself doing meth. And you need not. And if you are a young Christian brought up in a Christian house and oh I've never seen what the world is, I've never sinned as much as my parents or my family, the book of Ecclesiastes would be a great study to do. And to study the book of Ecclesiastes and look at the last two verses of the book and relate on them. Now, I'm going to hold you to look it up yourself. The Bible says, study and show thy, thyself approved unto God. A workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Again, Ecclesiastes chapter 2 verse 12. And I turned myself to behold wisdom. That is what is right, but... There's a wisdom that's not right. You know, somebody built the wisdom by their wisdom, the weapons that have killed in war. Adolf Hitler had wisdom. And look what he did with his wisdom. So there is a godly wisdom to please and honor God the Father. And there's a wisdom that pleases the devil, the devil. Satan, Lucifer. But when Solomon is the wisdom, the wisdom came from God. It was God saying, hey, I'm going to give it to you. I turned myself to behold wisdom and madness and a comma and folly. Well, if we go back up to chapter 1, verse 17, I gave my heart to know wisdom. Okay, that's what we're doing now. Chapter 2, verse 12. And to know madness and folly. Together. A husband and wife. Madness and folly. A salt and pepper. Madness and folly. Pancakes and, and syrup. Madness and folly. And when we come to Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verse 12. Wisdom, comma, and madness, and comma, and folly. So madness and folly can be separate and yet it can be together. A man and a female, two separate people, yet when that man and that female come together, they're one in marriage. So madness and folly can be together or they can be separate. And Solomon looked said, wisdom, madness and folly. I looked at the three. For what can the man do that cometh after the king, even that which has already been done? 
we look at today, you know, we got smartphones. We look at, there's nothing new on the sun. There was communications in, in Solomon's time. Now, they didn't use batteries. They didn't use electronics. They would send a piece of paper written by the hand of a man to, to bring it to the king or to, to bring it to war. There's nothing new under the sun. I mean, it may be more advanced, but is it more helpful? But we're not going to get into that. And what we're looking at is God has allowed Solomon to venture into sin. And to record his fightings by the Holy Spirit. In Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13 and 14, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God. An entire worldly book upon the eyes of a worldly man. He says, okay, here's the conclusion. Fear God. No public school system, no space agency, no college has adapted to the fact is fear God. And madness and folly is rampant in the streets. And keep his commandments. Now, that's his Old Testament. But there are commandments for the Christian too. Love thy brother. Love one another as Christ has loved you. Those are commandments. Just not the law. And yet Paul writes to us from the commandments that, you know, we're not to commit adultery, we're not to steal, we're not to bear false witness, we're to honor our mother and father. We are to keep, not for salvation, but for that walk that's before God. For this is the whole duty of man, and he doesn't say it's saved or lost. Now this verse is remarkable to the fact is, a lost man is going to stand at the great white throne judgment. The books are open. The works are declared. And if he has not kept the law, he will be found guilty before God and Jesus Christ who kept the whole law. And he will be guilty. And yes, if you've been involved in any public ministry of witnessing to somebody, you would hear somebody say, well, I haven't killed anybody. I've done no murder. I'm good. Blah, 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 blah. That speaks from your heart, from your conscience, that God has in man to do good. And to do wisdom, that's one point of God. Madness and folly, there is more parts of being evil than there is to be good. Broad is the way that leads to destruction, and many, many, Strays the gate that leads to life and the few. For God shall bring every work into judgment. And every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Now we put that to the Christian. And we put that to 1 John 1, 9. If it's under the blood of Jesus Christ. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. And to cleanse us from all, right, un cleanse us from all righteousness. That's why. Madness and folly is to go about your own way with no regard to God. The wisdom that Psalm has learned out, fear God. Keep his commandments, and there are commandments not for salvation, but there are commandments for Christians. And, I mean, we're not to go out and build a battlement around our roof, but are we not really? The, the Proverbs speaks about taking care of our animals. I am not going to go so far, I'm going to go out and save the manatees and save the whales. But I'm not going to do anything to, to make it worse. It's the whole duty of man, save the lost. Folly is sin. That's against God. Folly, there's no, there's no fear of God. Say yourself a Christian. When you sin, you have taken your eyes off God and put it upon self or the devil or both. To do, you don't fear God when you sin. And if you have come to the condition that you are sinning, you're saved, and you are know what you're doing against God and enjoying it, you have got to seriously stop your life, get down, get in the book, 
the Bible and get in prayer and get right with God. Seriously. Ecclesiastes 2.13 Then I saw that wisdom is so with folly. And as far as light excelleth darkness. What overcomes folly? Wisdom. What overcomes the darkness? Light. Where lies God? Wisdom. Where lies God? Light. Where lies the realm of Satan? Folly. And again, where lies the, the, the realm of Satan? Darkness. Wisdom is above sin. Wisdom is to know how not to sin, how to please God. To him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. Job 28, 28. And unto man he said, Behold the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. Proverbs 1, 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. Proverbs 9.10 The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And knowledge of the holy is understanding. We've already saw it in the, in the previous one. Ecclesiastes 2.12 and 13-14 We ought to fear God. That is why. Folly would be, and I don't know if they still have, but when I grew up in, in high school, uh, there would be little bumper stickers, no fear. That is folly. And when you don't fear God, you're not going to do light right. You're not going to get the light. And you will stand in, in the presence of God in folly, in darkness, condemned before God. John chapter 3. There's no folly that be walking right with God, and yet Christians have folly. I have found myself to be a fool, doing foolish things amongst fools with folly. And I have, if I confess my sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all righteousness. Yeah, I'm to judge myself. That I am a sinner. I am not to lavish and enjoy my sins. I am all to put a battle up. I don't want to do it. I'm tired of doing it. I'm tired of this battle. It's not me, Lord. It's this rotten, miserable flesh. And again, if we go into, as Christians, loving our sins, we need to get right with God. If you are loving sin, you're not right with God. Ecclesiastes 7.25 I applied my heart to know. Alright, now we're looking at knowing. And to search. Look, go find. Yeah. And to seek. Out wisdom. Jesus said, ask, seek, and knock. And it shall be open to you. And the reason of things. To know the wickedness of folly. Oh. What is folly? It's wickedness. Even of foolishness. And madness. Now listen. We look back here. We got folly and madness. Madness of folly. Chapter 1 verse 17. Now we come to chapter 7, verse 25, and we got foolishness and madness married together. Wickedness equals sin, which equals folly, which equals sin with foolishness. And you can apply your heart to know, to search the scriptures, to seek out from the word of God through the Holy Spirit, and you do not have to apply yourself or applicate yourself into sin. <coughs> Excuse me. To know what sin is and what it does. 
You want to know what sin does? Take a little vacation from life and go visit a hospital. Go visit a nursing home. And you will realize, if you're allowed to talk to the pay, you will realize to come know what alcohol will do, what tobacco will do, what sex will do, what anything that goes against God, you will know what happened by walking through a hospital, by walking through a nursing home, without having to apply yourself to do what is already been done. Folly is sin. Folly is also, you know, you don't really have to do it. I've known a man, Christian, saved, going off to glory right now. He lost his legs in, in, in uh, Vietnam or Korea, one of them wars. I don't need to go chop off my legs and, oh, how's it feel? Just, I sat down and I talked with him. And I learned a lot of things from being a new Christian. And when we study and read our Bible, we can see what sin has done to a man as great to God as David was. And when we look at this, the life of David, how wonderful he was for God and how wonderfully he fell from God. And yet how wonderful is God to forgive him of his sin, but still, let's face it, Bathsheba and Solomon were still scars of his sin that you would think sometime in life, when you look at Bathsheba, you remember that afternoon. And maybe Uriah. Sin is folly and it's against God and it leaves scars and wounds. And then when Solomon says, Apply my heart to know, search, and seek the scriptures. What is the result of disobeying God? When God says something and we do quite the opposite, what is the result? I'll tell you what the result is. Hospitals, prisons, police, morgues. Caskets, cemeteries, pain, sorrow, suffering. What did that all come from? Adam, do not eat of that fruit of that tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Don't eat it. Thou shalt surely die the day thereof. And to come to realize the folly of Adam and Eve is the reason why we have health care today and the reason why we have death insurance. It's why we have, in America, I believe, we, we can call 911 to get emergency assistance. That when you hear the sirens of emergency vehicle, it's because Adam did what God told him not to do. Now let's reverse it to today. The Bible says, go into all the world and preach the gospel, which I do. I, I do it street preaching. I will tell them, you need to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. That's what the Holy Spirit said through Paul. Now, they did what Adam did, told what Adam did, not believe God and do quite opposite. God told him not to eat the fruit, and he did. And we stand here today on this side of Calvary and say, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you don't, what is the penalty of not doing what God has told you to do? You go off in the lake of fire that burns forever. You will perish. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in should not perish but have everlasting life. He that has the son has everlasting life. He that has not the son shall not see life but the wrath of God abiding upon him. So the folly is, is when you do not do what God has told you to do or told you not to do. That's folly. That's sin. To him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, that's the case where you don't do, to him it is sin. And we can sin to the positive and we can sin to the negative and folly. God tells us not to do it and we do it. That's folly. That's sin. God says to do it and we don't do it. That's folly and that's sin, and they're both combined together. 
Now, it's going to be madness at the great white throne judgment when Jesus will tell them, depart from me, workers of iniquity, I never knew you. It's going to be complete, utter madness. There are going to be people in religion that thought they were right with God, and they're not. But will there be madness at the judgment seat of Christ when you've done what God told you not to do, and you've done what God, you have not done what God told you to do? And there will be Christians in heaven that will have no crowns, no rewards, and no inheritance. I don't know what happens to them. I'm not saying they don't go to heaven, but I don't know what what the feelings are going to be, if I can use that word. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 1. Dead flies, well, that's a great one, cause the anointment of the apothecary. That's a pharmacist, a druggist, a pharmacy. To send forth a stinking savior. So dead flies in medicine stink. That's what it says. All right, but we're not done. So does a little folly follow him. No, so does a little folly him that is in can't talk. So there's a little folly in him that is reputation, reputation for wisdom and honor. I can't recognize that word for some reason. Reputation. I'm apologizing. Alright, so here's a little folly. Not big folly. A little folly. A little sin. A little tiny sin. It's only a cookie. It's only a white lie. It's only calling out sick. It's only the little things. A little sin stinks and builds a hard of horrible character in the person doing it. A little sin stinks and builds a horrible character. And sometimes that little sin will be will build to bigger sins. And much more bigger sins. Like I said, there are some realms of sins you start off small, and when you come to the end of your life, if you don't control it, you don't put your flesh under, it's harsh. Ecclesiastes 10.6. Ecclesiastes 10.6. Is here because we're going to stop right here. Folly is set in great dignity, and the rich sit in low place. You're saying, What on earth is that? You mean the Bible saying that folly is great? No, it's not. It's saying that the world lavishes. And loves and honors sin. The movies, the media, the internet, and churches will pay for it. It is promoted. Look how great this sinner is. No, it's she's a pig. In the Bible, she's called a whore. She's called an adulteress. Look at this movie. You know, he's lying about his name. He's lying about what he's doing. And he's lying about, lying about, and lying about. And there are great mega churches out there. And they don't have mega truth. They have mega lies and deceiving. So what I would probably conclude is folly goes with the majority. Wisdom and knowledge goes with the minority. There are more churches out there that go for the devil, Satan, with their with his ministers and whatever doctrines and things. 
then there are true Bible believing churches trying to st strive to holiness and righteousness. Television is a great picture of folly that is set in great dignity. Because practically every channel is going to have the folly lifted up and look how great it is. He said, well, we got religious channels and the religious channels got just as much folly in a, a worldly aspect, in a worldly sin. When you got a woman who's teaching you the Bible, preaching to you the Bible on the television or radio program and the Bible says that the woman is not to assert the authority over a man, she is sinning, her ministry is a sin, and yet how great that that woman and the women are. You got women sitting around a table, gabbing and shooting the jaw, and if they have any husband, or how many husbands they're up to now, they won't clean the house for them, they won't prepare a meal for them, they won't take care of them, and they're just... You just fill with a mouth that leaves and shut up and don't realize that, that Matthew the Bible says you will give account for every idle word. The internet is just full of folly. Look how great this guy is. Look how great this woman is. Look at this great team. Look at this great... Man. So that's where it says folly is set on great dignity, not by God, but by the world. By a man that's written by the worldly standard. 